All right, folks, so this time we are looking at a um, concept for lab 3.3, and for this one, it's basically um, a bunch of custom functions that we use to check different things relating to um, different dates of the year. So um, there's a lot of setup. This is actually probably one of the longer labs that I've worked on, just because of the kind of the length that's needed. Um, if obviously you're familiar with the calendar, um, and if you start working on programming and using dates um, programmatically, it gets pretty difficult just because of um, how many different rules there are, and you know there there really aren't a whole ton of ways that this makes sense. Um, of course, if you if you start programming using like Python or other languages, there's a lot of preset functions that make um, what we're about to look at really useful. But for these, um, there really are just, I mean, raw setup and a lot of conditions and a lot of different things that we're checking. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to check and start with month name. Um, so as you can see, here's where we start to get pretty complicated. Um, there's definitely are probably more elegant ways to do this, but given sort of what we learned so far, um, you know, excluding the use of lists and excluding the use of um, more complicated functions, this is kind of, um, you know, the setup of our month function. As you can see, we started with naming our custom block here, month name, and then we added a variable. Um, again, you add variables by clicking the plus right here and inputting a uh, variable name like so. Um, as you can see right here, I named mine M number and it's basically just checking for one through 12 and it says if the M number equals something, then we say that month is January, the month is February and so on and so on. And you can see how this works real quick. If I put in one and I click, my sprite tells me that the month name is January. Um, we also have the day name. So if I edit that real quick, it's just checking one through seven. Same thing, I've, I've created a variable called D number. It's just checking the day um, and just telling us whether it's Monday through Sunday, right? Days in. So this is where I've got a little bit more repeated with the code that I have. As you can see, I have pretty much the same thing that I have in my month name function. And I've just taken that and just say something different. Instead of saying, hey, this is January, I just say, hey, the month has blank number of days. <laughs> Um, we also have, um, I'm going to cover is a valid date real quick. So if I edit this and I show you, this is where we start to get a little bit, oh, it's dragging with me, a little bit more complicated, but, um, you know, I'm just checking several different things instead. Um, again, I'm kind of still using the same code that I already have because I already have it in my custom functions. Um, but I'm just, you know, using it slightly differently. So now I'm saying is a valid date. I've added M number and D number this time, both as variables. The first thing that I check here because I wanted to get a little bit more, um, you know, official with this function was if the M number is greater than 12 or if it's less than one. So if it's outside the range of a normal month um, or if the day number that we're given, because again, we're checking, um, you know, the month and the date and we're saying, is that a valid um, date? If the day number is less than one, I'm basically saying the date is not get the date given is not valid, right? But then we go down into all these different trees, and I say here if the month is one, if it's January, and if the day number is less than 32, the date given is valid. Now, if it's equal to 32 or if it's greater, here I'm saying the date given is not valid. So I'm going into that else tree right here, and then of course we go into all our different months right here. Um, I would challenge you and I would challenge your students, um, you know, if you are a student watching this to try to come up with a much more elegant way to do this um, As you'll see with a lot of my programs. I'm pretty much doing it with just, you know, the most basic version of it uh, in the projects. I try to get a little bit more complicated just so that my code is reusable and, and try to, you know, have something of a better, um, you know, coding nomenclature. But for these, I kind of go a little bit more basic. And then here's my last function that I'm gonna cover for the sake of this video. Um, the other functions that are included in the assignment really are just a matter of setup. Um, it just takes a lot of time. Uh, not extremely complicated, but it's just a matter of, you know, repeatedly setting these things up. Um, so this one is a leap year, and you can see I've added the variable Y number. And again, if you wanna use these variables that you have defined in your function definition, you just click and you drag it out like so. So for this one, it's pretty simple. I have this condition right here that I'm checking, and then I just have two statements that get triggered based off that. Here it's if the um, year number, um, and then we have this, this right here actually, which I might wanna explain just a little bit. Um, and let me take this out so that I can explain it. 
2000 mod 4 so um, mod is an operator that will basically just give you the um, remainder of a division operation so 2000 mod 4 right here will give me zero because the um, remainder of 2000 divided by 4 is zero if I were to put in 2001 mod 4 instead you see I get a remainder of 1 um, that's just the simple you know explanation of the modulo operator that's what it's called um, but you know most times we just kind of say it's it's y number mod 4 um, here I am checking the condition if y number divided by 4 equals 0 or the, the remainder equals 0 and if the y number is not divisible by 100 or if the y number is divisible by 400 then I want to say it's a leap year again that's the conditions that we were given um, and that's the conditions for a leap year so that's what we're checking in that condition we're saying if these two are true or if this one's true that's a leap year um, so that's how we do all these different functions for uh, lab 3.3 the rest of them are really just set up based on uh, what you know of calendars and the conditions that they give you um, again there's probably way more uh, elegant and more programmatic ways to do this but you know for the sake of the assignment I think this really does uh, bring it all together and so that is lab 3.3